Thank you, Monica, and uh, members of the working group, um, and folks from Sun Zia for uh, the uh, tour today and the opportunity to talk. Um, actually, um, I think I can keep this fairly brief since um, it's actually quite gratifying to hear uh, many of the uh, points that uh, we would have made uh, made for us by our friends here in the community. We really appreciate that. Um, so. Um, I just wanted to cover a couple of points, and, and again, uh, I think many of these have already been made by uh, David and, Chet and the other uh, speakers, but um, uh, the Conservancy has uh, had a long-standing interest in the conserva uh, conservation of the uh, San Pedro Valley. Um, we've been working here directly um, for over 30 years. We have a number of preserves and um, staff really working from uh, Mexico and the headwaters of the river all the way down to uh, the confluence of the Gila River. Um, a number of preserves on major tributaries in Arabica Canyon and Beale Shoot, as well as along the main stem of the river. Um, we uh, uh, don't work in isolation. Um, our work is done only uh, through cooperative partnerships with a wide variety of um, uh, federal, uh, state, um, county uh, agencies, other uh, uh, non-governmental organizations, but most importantly, a lot of private landowners, uh, many of whom are here in the uh, audience tonight, um, none of this work would be able to uh, be done single-handedly. Um, one point that uh, hasn't been made by other speakers is that um, one way that a lot of the conservation in the valley here has been accomplished has been through um, uh, directing mitigation for other projects that have happened um, in the state uh, to the San Pedro Valley. Um, a couple of the major uh, conservation investors in the valley are uh, the Bureau of Reclamation and Salt River Project, and um, uh, their investments here have been made because of um, environmental impacts that were sustained in other places, most notably um, at uh, uh, Roosevelt Lake when the, uh, the dam was uh, raised a few years ago and the lake level was going to be increased. Uh, they did their own habitat conservation plan with the Fish and Wildlife Service and needed to mitigate for uh, effects to uh, southwestern willow flycatcher. Um, the, they were in a situation where they couldn't avoid those impacts there, so um, looking for places to mitigate on um, the San Pedro became a logical um, uh, place. Why is that important? Because if new um, projects come into this area uh, and they start to affect those mitigations, it jeopardizes their ability to be able to maintain their um, operations. Um, also, um, we're running out of this uh, quality of habitat, so um, uh, to try to mitigate for impacts here, there's really very few places left to go. Um, and then I guess the last uh, point I uh, probably <coughs> make is that um, we have a unique opportunity. Some of the speakers talked about how just over the hill there's a, uh, a city of a million people, and in fact, um, uh, I think you've seen all of the uh, statistics, certainly on the species here. Uh, here's some of the different diverse habitats, the uh, uh, wooded swamp of Bingham Cienega there, and then the uh, old growth mesquite bosque of the uh, 7B Ranch. Uh, <coughs> it's a project that Resolution Copper is doing uh, as part of a land exchange, uh, again, um, uh, because they would like to be able to mine a major ore body up in Superior um, in order to gain control over that land. They're looking to trade the federal government uh, for other conservation lands, and they're focusing it here. So their ability to be able to um, provide jobs and um, develop an ore body is again dependent on the ability to uh, maintain the integrity of this system here. Um, <clears throat> another area that uh, was, uh, I know uh, the focus here tonight is on the Cascabel area. Um, we do look at the entire river as a, as a system, and um, some of the other routes that are being proposed are a little bit further north of here. Arabica Canyon um, is a significant wilderness area. It's probably the most important um, uh, native fish um, uh, community in the, the southwest. Um, seven, eight, nine. There, there, have been so, there are so few places for native fish to be um, uh, recovered anymore that uh, more species are being introduced into Arabica. So anything that's going to affect its watershed is uh, of significant concern to us. Um, the point, uh, uh, this just shows some of the different regional assessments that have been done uh, that uh, document the high value of this. This is the Conservancy's Eco Regional Map of the Southwest. <laughs> Lower San Pedro Valley is uh, in the top 5% of areas. 
uh, here, and uh, and then here's the uh, uh, wildlife linkages uh, project that Game and Fish and ADOT did, and again, um, Lower San Pedro Valley, and particularly this area here in Cascabel, is extremely important. The point I wanted to make about the here's conservation land, and the point that I wanted to make about um, the Sun Corridor and the million people on the other side of the valley is that um, <coughs> we um, th this this slide focuses on water, and of course a lot of our interest here is on water. Uh, but the other point is that um, just as all this energy is coming um, to support the projected future um, population growth of the Sun Corridor, basically the area from <coughs> Prescott down to uh, the Mexican border, um, that uh, we have to make some choices as to um, uh, what parts of the Sun Valley we are going to set aside for conservation and where we're going to choose to have um, growth occur. And our opportunities to protect outstanding natural values, both wildlife as well as recreational and culture, um, our, our best opportunity here is in the San Pedro Valley. So that's why the choices we make on all kinds of infra infrastructure projects um, a year or two ago, we were addressing the I-10 uh, bypass project, and again, um, uh, growth follows infrastructure, and so um, this is another reason why uh, we, we share the community's concern about um, this area. Uh, infrastructure projects, I think this point's been made as well, um, should follow a hierarchy of avoid, minimize, and mitigate. And, um, I think we're still at the point where um, there are there are very strong arguments that say that the San Pedro Valley is definitely an avoid area. Thanks very much.